morning everyone. I'm Nancy Ennis and I'm glad to see you all here this morning and for us to be together. So let us begin our time together with our statement of faith. We'll take this together. There is one presence and one power in my life and in the universe. God the good, omnipotent. Let's take this within for a moment. Take a moment to feel that one presence and that one power that dwells within us. Feel it as a living, moving, breathing presence. Always calling us upward. Always calling us to be all we came here to be. The Spirit of God that dwells in each person in this world. And we're waking up to our awareness that we can live from this spirit as this spirit. And we can change this world we're living into, heaven on earth. So we thank you, God, for our time together this morning. We thank you for our faith. Thank you for your ever-abiding presence. We thank you for all your blessings. And so it is. Amen. I'm Michael Thomas. I'm your prayer chaplain for today. Uh, We have the prayer box in front right now. After the service, it'll be out front. If you have any prayer requests, please fill them out and put them in there. And if you'd like prayer with me after the service, I'll be available in the prayer room. Now, first thing is the daily word celebrations I share love in the celebrations of life I joyfully celebrate the milestones of life with family and friends from new babies to community service awards I take the opportunity to say congratulations whenever possible I also celebrate my own special days giving thanks for the people who helped me along the way For loved ones who live nearby, I energetically participate in birthday parties and other gatherings. I also reach out to friends who live far away to let them know I'm thinking of them on their special day. Picking up the phone may be the kindest thing I do today. When dates on the calendar bring to mind loved ones beyond the physical realm, I celebrate them in my thoughts and memories. I light a candle in my heart for them and feel love everlasting. And from 1 Kings 1 verse 40, And all the people went up following him, playing on pipes and rejoicing with great joy. Everybody just relax. Settle into your seat. and feel the love in the sanctuary washing over you. Father, Mother, God, Holy Spirit, as we sit here, we know that we are blessed. And we thank you for our increased understanding of these blessings. We appreciate the fact that when we have complaints about the driver that cuts us off, about the person who gets in that uh, 10 item or underline when they've got 12 items, we know that we can change those complaints to compliments. We thank that driver for reminding us to be safer and more considerate in our driving. We compliment the person who jumped in line for their assertiveness 
because we don't know. They may have a, a sick child at home that they're hurrying to get back to. We remember that we ask to be forgiven of our trespasses as we forgive the trespasses of others. So Father, Mother, God, with an open heart, we move from complaints to compliments. And we are blessed. Amen and amen. Now, in preparation for our meditation, let us join together and sing our song today. Thank you for this day, a song of appreciation for all of our blessings. <coughs> you now to settle back into a space of meditation. Feel the chair supporting you. Hear the beautiful music. Concentrate on your heart. It may help you to put your hand over your heart. 
feel the sense of appreciation that floods you. Bring to mind somebody or something that you deeply and truly appreciate. Letting that sense of appreciation grow and glow and become part of you. Heavenly Father, Mother God, we so appreciate what you have done with us, for us, to us, and as us. Breathing in and through your heart. Letting your heart grow to encompass this room. Grow beyond the bounds of this building. Now your heart energy includes the city, the county, the state. Let your heart energy include the entire country, the entire continent, the hemisphere, the whole world. Your heart is part of the universe, as are you. And in the silence, we will appreciate that universe and all that God has made for us and all that we have made for God in the silence, in the silence. Dear Heavenly Father, Mother God, we come to you in deep appreciation, knowing that what you have made for us is perfect for us, even though we may not appreciate it at the time. But what we have from you is perfect for us. And in your name and in your way, and in your will, we appreciate and pray amen and amen. And so it is. to welcome everybody again today, everybody who's here, and I'd like to welcome everybody who's joining us on TV, 
and uh, joining us on YouTube or wherever else you may find us these days. <laughs> and if you're here for the first time, we'd like to give you a special welcome. So if you can indicate that by raising your hand. If we're here for the first time, okay, wonderful. Anybody over here? We're glad you're here today. We invite you to stay with us after this service for fellowship. We can get acquainted and hope you will have a wonderful experience and come back again and be part of our spiritual community. turn to sing. This is uh, a really lovely song that we've heard before from our wonderful Jake Green, who I hope he's listening in here and saying, good job, sweetheart. <laughs> um, and it really fits what we're talking about because we really are all one. I'm just a spoke in the wheel, one grain of sand, and it feels so right to be just where I am, one little part of a much bigger plan, and the longer I'm here, the more I understand. I am one, we are one, like the rays of the sun, when it's all 
Thank you, Kate. That was beautiful. And a wonderful way to stop and remember this is the sixth annual Global Oneness Day that we are celebrating today. I think back to how that day started and we had one of the members on Humanity's Team for Oneness that took the petition to the United Nations asking for this day. And the head of the United Nations said, do not wait for it to go through the red tape. He said, this is too important. This idea you have must start now. Go home and make it happen. And they did. This comes from Humanities Team for Oneness. People came that night, the last night, to sign the petition. All here, it happened in this room here at Unity of Charlotte. Neil Donald Walsh started Humanities Team for Oneness, and in six years they have done so many things and grown so much right in front of our very eyes. So our message this morning is about a discovery that can lead us into the living experience of oneness. You all know probably that we just created a yard sale and we just completed it. And I want to thank all of you for your donations. It was such a successful yard sale. We made more money than we ever expected to make. But the yard sales have a wonderful thing when they come. They give us all the opportunity to clean out our clutter. And it was so surprising to me is the treasures we find in that accumulation of stuff that we don't want, we don't need, and we don't even remember we have. So this year, we cleaned out our storage room behind those closets over there. And we were looking for what we could put in the yard sale that we weren't using anymore. And I saw this banner of blue um, Banners, it's a pile of banners is what I meant to say. A pile of blue banners on the shelf in one of the cupboards. 
These banners are the ones that we put out in front on those two posts you might have seen in our front yard when we want to announce an event that's coming up. And under the blue banners was this little piece of yellow sticking out. I wondered we have a yellow banner, I thought. I took it out and I unfolded the banner. And here it is. I'm going to show you what I found. Maybe, let's see, can you see it from up here best? Yes. Michael's going to help me open it. And this is what happened when I opened this banner. Can you see it? It says. <laughs> and does it look familiar to anybody? Oh. It says, Unity of Charlotte is a complaint-free church. <laughs> this banner went up on those signposts. When we put on our purple bracelets that Sunday, and we had declared ourselves to be a part of making a complaint-free word happen. How many people were here on that first day that we passed out the purple bracelets and we started this initiative? Okay, we had a few. I didn't know how many would remember this day. But what I want to do is revisit that day, bring it up to um, where we are today. Because really it's a message this morning about our journey and how far we have come in a very, very short time. So let's revisit how all this started. It started with a unity minister named Will Bowen. He was a minister of Christ Unity Church in Kansas City, Missouri. And it seems he had gotten tired of the people in his congregation complaining about his music selections. <laughs> and he started thinking, wow, you know, it'd be a lot better world if we just stopped complaining. And it was in 2006, in the summer, that they were doing a series, a summer series, based on Edwin Gaines' book, The Four Laws of Prosperity. And what happened is, in her book, it says right there that any complaining is a block to your prosperity. And she said, y'all needed to stop complaining for 21 days, because that's how long it, changed, it takes to change a habit. 21 days, you quit complaining, it'll all be over. So he was thinking about that, and when he went home that day, and he said he had a divine inspiration. He had a way to break that habit. So what he did is he ordered some purple bracelets. And on the bracelet it said, Spirit. And what he did is he passed these out on Sunday to his congregation, and along with a sheet of the rules on how you use this bracelet. Here is one of them. This is an antique or a relic, whichever you want to call it. But this is the purple bracelet. And what happened is he told them, put the bracelet on one wrist, and everybody did that. And then every time you complain, or you feel like you want to complain, you take it off and you put it on the other wrist. This is annoying already. <laughs> and if you see somebody wearing a bracelet who's complaining, and you can tell them about that, that they need to change their bracelet. But first, you must change your bracelet. So three rules is all it took to start this complaint-free world. So the idea was wear your bracelet on one wrist because you don't complain for 21 days. So you don't take it off, you just leave it on. But the reason it's on the same wrist is because you haven't complained. <coughs> so what happened with that is, his church went forward with this idea, and they spread it out at work and at home, and they started getting besieged with requests for this purple bracelet. So they went into manufacturing them themselves. They changed the name, and they put on there a complaint-free world. And the bracelet changed at that time, but everybody wanted a bracelet. So what happened then is it caught on in the unity movement. And unity ministers were all wanting to sign the contract to be a complaint-free church and get an order of bracelets. And you can probably imagine I was one of them. <laughs> I uh, got the bracelets early on and had them on a Sunday service set aside that I would give them out. Nobody really knew that we were going to do that. So we put that sign up on the post so when people came on Sunday, they'd say, hey, what's going on here? We're going to be a complaint-free church. How's that going to happen? But we had the sign up on that day, the began, day we began the initiative. And I just really got into it. I kept thinking, yeah, this would be a better world. I always want a better world. If we stop complaining, it's going to happen. So I was really into it. So when the bracelets came, I called Tim Funk, who was the religious editor of The Observer. I said, hey, you don't want to miss this one. 
we got these bracelets, see, and we're going to put them on, we're not going to complain anymore, and then we're going to go out and work for a complaint-free world. And there was big silence, and he said, I have something else to do on Sunday. But Saturday night, and it was kind of late, he called me and he said, I've changed my mind, I'm coming tomorrow. So Tim Funk, the religious editor of The Observer, came to our Sunday when we passed out the bracelets. He interviewed everyone who was here, and the afternoon he called me and he said, you're going to be on the front page of the second session tomorrow. Brought a big, huge article about the people with the purple bracelets that were going to change the world. <laughs> so here we were with our purple bracelets, and that day, Fox News called. They wanted to interview some people from the church and put us on the nightly news. So we had a big day. Observer, nightly news, Unity of Charlotte, purple bracelets changing the world. So that was kind of how it all started here at Unity of Charlotte and how it went. We passed out the bracelets and everybody had it on who was here. And what happened, people found out before they walked out the door, they'd changed their bracelet. <laughs> Maybe not once only. <laughs> So already we were practicing. I will confess, my bracelet stretched out of shape and fell off. This is not my original bracelet, but one day I lost it. Man, I didn't go looking for it either. I went, this is good. So Will Bowen sort of had a, a dream. I kind of want to go back and revisit how this happened and what, what his dream was. When he saw this was going to be a momentum and how big it was going to be, and actually it was an international movement. People were calling from around the world, and he had a list of countries where they had sent these bracelets. So he got a slogan to help him with that, and the slogan came from Maya Angelou. And the slogan was, if you don't like something, if you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude, but don't complain. So the shorter version of that was, zip your lip if you're tempted to snip. <laughs> <laughs> and he did that um, with his slogan. And he had big plans for this movement. He could see it moving. He thought, wow, this is really going to, this is going to take off big. But what happened with the movement was kind of the history of it. But I think what intervened in the movement was he wanted it to be a complaint-free day. The Wednesday before Thanksgiving, everyone was going to stop complaining in the world. That's a pretty big goal for people you don't know. <laughs> And then he got a push to go to the government and have this declared a national no complaint free day. And the people in the government who took this up for him started complaining about it. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened with the complaining about it was he got, I think, discouraged and he kind of let it kind of smooth out. But you know, I'll tell you see what I really think happened. You know, we love something new. We love what is going to happen when we start something. I think the secret came above it and took over people's attention. <laughs> anyway, something happened to the complaint-free world when they was trying to um, make it bigger than I think it wanted to be. So let's look at complaining. It goes by many names. You probably heard all of them. And you can add some if you know and I don't know. Wine, gripe. Bellyache, um, some of the other things we call it is moan, groan, nag, whimper, snivel, all kinds of words that describe this habit we have of complaining. When we complain, we talk about what isn't working, how bad it is, how it can't be any better, how we hate it, how we don't like it, and what is wrong. And what happens is when we do that, we get into a field of negativity. And what happens beyond that is we lose our connection to the abundance that we do have and the good in our life, we lose our connection to each other and to all of life and to God, We're all down in this heavy negative energy of griping and complaining. Complaining is contagious. It pulls us into it. Have you ever noticed you're feeling real good and there's a group of people complaining and you just kind of get whoop, and next thing you know you're complaining with them? You ever notice that? Well, here's the statistics. It takes 5.8 eight people to offset one negative person complaining. So that's why it pulls you in. You don't quite have enough people in there yet to, to help you get out of it. But it pulls us in and we lose our sight of what we do have. And it's so contagious is the problem. And it's such a habit that we've had for so long is the bigger problem. It's hard to break that and it's hard to break the pull of the negativity. And it has some benefits that serve us in ways we might not like to be served. 
It can be a way to get our needs met. We all need a validation and attention. And sometimes if we complain loud enough and long enough, we get a lot of attention from people. Sympathy that feels like love and somehow we meet that need. It also can be a way to avoid what we don't want to do. We complain about our to-do list, but we don't do a thing on it. <laughs> Complaining, it seems like we're doing it. So we complain instead of taking action. It can be a way to meet our egoic needs also. Our ego always wants to feel better than everybody else. So we complain more than anybody else. We're better than everybody else. Or we complain about people to bring them down so we can feel better about ourselves. These are all kind of hidden things that are hidden inside and we don't know why we do it. It also excuses us from spiritual growth. We just complain about our limitations and we don't have to do anything more about it. So a lot of things that it does for us. It's a way to avoid direct communication. We don't have to say what's really wrong, we just complain about what we don't like. And often, and we see this a lot in our world today, there is a bond formed by people coming together against a cause. It's kind of like a, we, that negative energy, could you, it's a bond. So maybe you're wondering then what happened to the complaint-free world. Well, one of the things that happened in the beginning was looking at, is this going to be a fad? Or will this be a movement in human history that changes our consciousness and our way of relating to everything? Which will it be? A fad, by definition, is something everyone wants today and no one wants tomorrow. So that's kind of um, what happened here. What Bill Brown said, what he learned from this complaint-free movement, is people want things to be better, but they're not willing to take action to do what needs to be done. The statistics that they reported in their little newsletter, they sold or sent out billions of bracelets and hundreds of people have tried to stop complaining. That kind of talks about <laughs> how many people were really involved in this and not just a fad. Because here we are, and it's nine years later since that Sunday in his church he pressed those out, and eight years later than we have been doing it here, and we're still complaining. So I guess we're going to have to go with a fad, right? <laughs> that it probably was. But it doesn't have to be. So what happened to the purple bracelet here at Unity of Charlotte? Well, 21 days, bracelet back and forth, back and forth. How many times you changed your bracelet today was the conversation. How many times... Um, Five times, oh, that's good, ten, you're still complaining. I kind of will wait to see what was going on with everybody. 21 days, and I had a certificate waiting for whoever was the first one, and nothing happened. But something happened on the second Sunday when we were doing our, at our 14th day. Someone in our congregation stood up and offered $100 to somebody who would be complaint-free for that whole time. And that person came back the next week and said she had been complaint-free for the whole time. I didn't have the certificate ready. He gave her the hundred dollars. Never saw her again. <laughs> <laughs> Never saw her before either. <laughs> so that was kind of a, an interesting thing. In it. So people here got tired of these bracelets. And they got tired of changing them. They got tired of the whole thing. Took the sign down. Oh, by the way, we left it up too long. Got a fine for having it up too long. But that was okay. <laughs> Things just didn't move along like I thought they would or hoped they would. <laughs> because I caught the idea and I said, yeah, this could be a better world if we did this. And the purple bracelets don't work. I got that. It's got to be something else. And I thought, well, you know, we're focusing on what we don't want. We don't want to complain, and we're thinking of complaining every time we change our bracelet. And we're creating more complaining, maybe. So guess what I did? I got a different bracelet. I got a green bracelet. <laughs> Somebody got the green bracelet. It was a nice bracelet, and it said, um, grateful, I appreciate, I'm grateful in all things. I'm grateful in all things. Be grateful in all things was the other side of the bracelet. So I thought, what would replace complaining? I thought it has to be appreciation. They're not compatible. And that's why I got the bracelets. Passed them out on the Sunday before Thanksgiving. And you didn't have to change it. You didn't have to think about it. But every time you saw that bracelet, just change to being grateful for something. Well, that didn't last very long either. <laughs> All of a sudden, the green bracelets disappeared. 
And you know, one of the things I want to go back, the purple bracelets, we got a lot of requests for those. People wanted those bracelets. They wanted them for friends and family that were complainers. <laughs> I think that was another piece to the whole thing, you know, of what had happened. <laughs> but then what happened is, green bracelet didn't work and I wasn't going to give up. I got a gratitude rock. And I passed those out, oh, somebody got the gratitude rock. I passed those out on Sunday with a gratitude message. Put them in your pocket, they feel heavy, or in your purse, they feel heavy. They were big old rocks. I had many baskets of them, I wanted something with some substance to it. And every time you feel that, just change your thoughts to being grateful. Or carry it in your hand, people ask what you're doing, you can say, I'm being grateful. I had a lot of good ideas how to use this rock. That didn't work at all. <laughs> So I realized that we had tried three things and complaining, I'm still complaining, you know, I'm still looking inside of myself for things that don't work and how I can make them worse and how it, how it can happen. So then what happened was one day I had like this epiphany, we call it what you will, and I realized, oh my gosh, this whole complaining thing is the foundation of how unity started. It started with Myrtle Fillmore speaking words of appreciation to the cells in her body and healing a chronic disease. After two years, this is what she said. This was part of the discovery that got my attention. I have stopped gossiping. I have stopped speaking frivolent words. I have stopped petulant words, angry words. I've stopped it, she said. I'm so grateful now. That was from her discovery of, of sharing this appreciation with her body. She didn't wear a bracelet. Green or purple, she didn't have a rock. It happened naturally when her heart opened. So I got it and I thought, oh wow, we get our hearts open, we won't complain. But at that time, I didn't know how to take it to the next step. I didn't know how to bring it down to the heart so we'd stay in our heart long enough to get that appreciation. So then what I did was, the day I found the banner, I realized we've done it and we're doing it here. It comes to us through HeartMath, that organization in California where we're having classes now about going to our heart with their spiritual practices that keep our heart open, keep our focus in our heart, keep love flowing. When we are in the heart, there is no judging, there is no worry, there is no blame. We have care, compassion, appreciation, understanding. And when we're centered in our heart and our head comes in alignment with our heart, we call it a coherence inside of ourself. The heart leads and the head follows. It's kind of like that scripture, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. So we feel these feelings in our heart that are not compatible with complaining at all. We feel them in our heart and our head joins in and we begin to think thoughts of love. So the idea then is in the fire of the heart, there is no room for complaining. And what happens is we choose love, we feel that love in all its many forms in our heart. Our perception changes. Complaining ends. And what happens is judging changes to compassion. And what happens is worry changes from faith in the worst possible outcome to faith in the possible outcome. And blame changes to understanding. Criticizing changes to care. We don't complain anymore. So when this happened, we realized that our oneness is found in our heart. And it begins as we go to our heart and as we feel from our heart and we live from our heart. Living from our heart will never be a fad. We came here to live from our heart and to share that love in our heart with everyone. It's who we are, it's what we are to do on this earth. So we don't have to worry about wearing a bracelet for this one or wearing anything for this one. It's just the idea of going to our heart. So anytime we feel like complaining, what we can do is what Alan did and what Michael did today before their prayers to bring us in our heart. And it's called a quick coherence. We focus on our heart, we breathe in and out through our heart, and we feel a heart feeling of care, compassion, or appreciation. We won't complain. It's over. 
So we have come far enough now that we have something we know can work. It calls us to take that journey from our head to our heart and learn to feel in our heart and learn to stay in our heart and learn to share that heart energy. And we're doing that right here at Unity of Charlotte. So maybe we'll make a new banner now. <laughs> Stop complaining and that will be in the big heart. <laughs> I don't know. So that round circle with the line through, we might come up with another ba- banner. But in this heart math that really I've taken on this last year because it's so powerful, I have learned something that when we are in coherence, our heart and our head working together, what happens is we laugh more. There's more laughter there. And when we laugh, we come into coherence. I didn't know that before. So put that also out there. Laughing changes from, the laughter changes us from complaining to feeling happy, to feeling joy and peace and all the spiritual feelings. So today, in honor of Global Oneness Day, We have our guru of laughter with us. And she, um, where she lives, she practices laughter yoga. 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 (laughs) We have a yogurt here. (laughs) It could be a complaint free yogurt. (laughs) So, anyway, she practices laughter yoga. And when she was here at Unity of Charlotte, whenever we had a chance, we had her lead a laughing meditation. So when I saw she was here, and I was so surprised, you guessed it's Martise Weaver. <laughs> when I saw that she was at the door of the church this week, and I was so surprised, I was so happy. And afterwards I said to her, Martise, you know, we'd never let you come and not put you to work. <laughs> Would you lead a laughing meditation? She said, of course I will. So come on up, Martise. Let's give her a hand. What a privilege to be here again. I'm just so thrilled to be here. And I also know we've done a lot of wonderful silent meditation. However, it also says, (laughs) it also says that we should have, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And so let's make a joyful noise. Those of you who have been with me before, you know how to do it, but I'm going to explain it so everybody will know how to do it. We have to stand up. Stand up, and we're going to go he, 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 ha, 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 ho, 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 until everybody joins in, and when everybody's laughing, then I'll stop it. <laughs> so here we go. He, 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 ha, 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 ho, ho, ho. He, 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 ha, 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 ho, ho, ho. He, 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 ha, 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 ho, ho, ho. He, 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 ha, 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 ho, ho, ho. world of laughter and love. (laughs) Okay, so we go forth now in our complaint-free world, the world that each one of us lives in by ourselves in the big world that we live in. That sign will be fulfilled. It can happen as we go to our hearts. One of the changes. And thank you for reminding us Laughter is one of the main ways, and don't take ourselves so seriously. Beyond this time and space Up, up, up 
Georgia, Georgia, the whole day through, just an old sweet song keeps Georgia on my mind. Oh. Georgia, Georgia, a song of you comes as sweet and clear as moonlight through the pines. Other arms reach out to me Other eyes smile tenderly Still in peaceful dreams I see the road leads back to you Georgia, Georgia, the whole day through, just an old sweet song keeps Georgia on my mind. Georgia, Georgia, the thought of you, just an old sweet song, keeps Georgia on my mind. Georgia, Georgia, the whole day through, just an old sweet song keeps Georgia on my mind. Just an old sweet song keeps Georgia on my mind Georgia on my mind Just an old sweet song keeps Georgia on my mind Georgia on my mind Georgia on my mind Georgia on my mind Just an old sweet song Keeps Georgia on my mind Georgia on my mind Georgia on my mind Georgia on my mind
Have a wonderful week.